My talk of the table, uh, I'm very excited to uh, welcome award-winning actor James Brolin, who is right here in studio. Brolin, of course, has been called a true renaissance man. He has starred in numerous TV shows and films, including Marcus Wem Welby, MD, yeah. and Catch Me If You Can. Yeah. Now, Brolin narrates the Netflix series Sweet Tooth. It's based on the DC comic book series of the same name about a viral pandemic that leads to the mysterious creation of babies born part human and part animal. In this clip from season two, Gus, a hybrid deer boy, helps a doctor trying to find a cure for the virus. Well, Gus got to walk in the footsteps of the woman who brought him into this world. Dr. Singh got one step closer to finding the answers he so desperately craved. Thank you, Gus. You helped me a great deal today. If you hurt Peter, I'm never helping you again. It was a deal. First on CBS Mornings, James Brolin joins us now. James, thank you very much for being here. Hey, um, my gosh. You know, we do, yeah. we thank do, you. we have to track our pieces. That's the word for it, but it just means voiceover like you're doing in this. And yeah. I am embarrassed by how good you are. You are amazing in this. <laughs> no. Your voice is so captivating. Can I tell you, am I wrong? Is, yeah. Over the years, your have, have you all done um, demonstration tapes for your agent? Yes. Mm -hmm. for yeah, my Never agent got was like, anything. Uh, keep done your hair 40 combed. of them over the years. Never <laughs> got anything. Really? Yeah. 40. Yeah, this is, this was was the first. Well, so this one came to be because <laughs> Robert Downey Jr., uh, who right. was an executive producer mm. on the series, uh, pitched you on it? How did it happen? He's a no, neighbor, right? I, I, yes, he's a neighbor, and I recently had lunch with him and Susan, his wife, and then I got a call, uh, you're who we want for our house. I said, well, who do I, what do I do? It's all up to Warners, make your deal with them. That's, uh, we're not making any other decision, that's it. Had so you that, even read the script <clears throat> we're going to be doing? Still haven't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> still haven't. Oh, uh, for, they trusted me with the voice. Yes. But they didn't trust me uh, not to yap about what the story was about. Oh, so uh, still to this day. And then you set it up, you do the voice over yourself in your home. How does that work? Well, that was during the pandemic. Yes. You know, and and uh, they weren't letting anybody on the lot there for a while, so... For the first five or six shows, they would deliver a big Equipment. case like this uh -huh. with a tripod with legs this big, and I'd have to lug it in, set it up, and here is this big box. I opened it up, and there's a big screen <laughs> and a Neumann mic and headphones, and I'm plugged into the Warner Brothers sound department. Wow. Sounds right? so good. With the director in New Zealand directing me. Wow. Wow. Now, yeah, so this, this uh, show world. is the aftermath of a fictional viral pandemic. Yeah, and um, there are a lot of parallels. I remember Written watching in 2009, it. though, yes. which is pretty wild. Yeah. Um, and as we were crawling our way out of uh, COVID-19, yeah, you know, there are these parallels. Do you see parallels in what's going on today in this show? Of course, yeah, yeah, and <clears throat> you know that's somewhat of an exaggeration. I would assume that like we've had millions die, and they must have had millions die. Right. But uh, the, the kids, the hybrid kids, they seem to be blaming it on. Mm. And we have situations where the blame went everywhere during the pandemic here. It's true. You know? Yeah. You know, it's interesting you're called a renaissance man, as Tony, as Tony said in the intro. I did not know all this time that you were a pilot, that you fly your own plane. I did not know this about you. I got my first... My, my dad was a, uh, an engineer for Douglas Aircraft, but I never yeah. w went in an airplane and... One day I got an invitation to take a lesson at 18 out of Santa Monica Airport, and I was 18. And that was That's it. many years ago. I've I've had I've been flying ever since. So do you and Barbara fly around together? She won't get in there with me. Why? Well, she, <laughs> why? She got why? in there once to have dinner with me. We had little bento boxes, and we just sat there and had dinner. She wouldn't <laughs> let me start it up. Well, is she a nervous flyer too? Very, Very nervous, nervous flyer. flyer. Yeah. Wow. Can you believe that you guys have been married for 25 years? Honestly. <laughs> I cannot. How old am I? <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the key so, to longevity in a marriage? I got to ask. Negotiation. There you go. Negotiation. That's spot on. And right it, there. you know, I, I had a friend say, I'm getting married. I said, oh, great. When? Soon? And she, no, in six months after we go to a, uh, a marriage counselor for six months, <laughs> as long as oh. he'll sit there. And I think that's it. 
you know, usually either the one or the other of them said, we've had two sessions and I'm fine yes. <laughs> and I'm out of here, you know, yes. yeah, yeah, not yeah. out of the marriage, but I'm not going to see that guy again. I don't like what he said to me. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. He's on so, their side. Yeah. That's good. That's Part of it but, is. So, but you and Barbara had a very interesting first how you met. I think that this is such a great story. Yeah. That you, that you knew she was the one because what did she say to you? Well, we were invited to a party to meet, a party of 30 people. It was a gorgeous night over the Bel Air Hotel on yeah. a patio. And uh, she disappeared for a while after shaking hands with me when she went and went down and saw the person's kids for a while. And then came up, everybody was seated at dinner and she walked around me. You know, 29 people were seated in one empty <laughs> place. She went to her and she said, who? Up your hair. Who screwed up your hair? <laughs> she used a real harsh word. <laughs> and I just you went, said, oh, man, you know, I'm here with a bunch of Hollywood liars and one person telling the truth. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Yeah. So I I was smitten from that moment yeah, on. I and know. We, we like a truth teller. We two like hours of teller. talking. Nobody got a word in. And here we are, 25 so, years later. 25 years 27 later. 27 years. 27 years later. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. Uh, you once calculated <laughs> that you have spent, in, in the days of your life, uh, more than 9,500 days on set. That's what the kids figured out. That's what I, the kids figured yeah, out? Yeah, yeah. That's a long time. Getting I know. Those I know. Getting up at 4:30 in the morning. And Never missed a day fright. from illness. It started with and, stage fright. And yeah. you said you still have stage fright. Still. So not, but not. I mean, on stage. Yeah, on stage. That's what audience. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. You're fine that. talking here. I was in a yeah. play in junior high, and uh, and the night it opened, I left before the play. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else held the spear. <laughs> That's and good. actually, the first person that ever came up to me about working on film, I said, well, I wouldn't have to talk, would I? <laughs> I said, Matter of fact, not. You just drive this Dodge truck. You're and now, a young cowboy. I, I was now you're still talking. I, was, I like it. I was a lead in an elementary school play, and then they heard me sing, and they made uh. it a chorus. <laughs> Everybody together. That James changed Brolin. the course of history. That's why you're here. And that's yeah. why I'm yeah. here. Still doing voiceover, even though I'm terrible at it. James Brolin, thank you very much. Oh, uh, a lot of good at it. Here. Yeah, you're thank terrific you're at it. Oh, yeah. my God. What I wouldn't give for that voice. Season two of Sweet Tooth premieres tomorrow on Netflix. Netflix.